on your tour? Shoot. Um, yeah, man, you've mentioned it in the past, and I'm curious, you've mentioned you would like or you demonstrate what a healthy alpha male looks like. Um, I don't know if you've ever touched on it, um, but I'm kind of curious. What does that mean to you? Like, what what does that look like for you, a healthy, quote, alpha male? Um, if you if you look into at, at least my experience, if you look into nature and and often what we've seen, what I've seen, uh, let's say on Discovery Channel or on, on random posts of, in nature about alpha male. Uh, my experience has been you'll often see uh, males um, in this kind of mating space they're challenging each other they're fighting each other um, they're beating chest with each other and uh, it can it can be very violent and um uh, let's say even scary to a certain extent i don't know if you've seen two silver back gorillas going at it but that is that's no joke like that's no joke um uh, power and so if we kind of take from that picture my experience of what is projected onto the idea of alpha male is often that idea it's overbearing it's controlling uh it's reactive and violent Mm. um it's domineering um Mm. and let's say um not open to dialogue or discussion um it's my way or the highway (laughs) as a as a theme and so You know, if you do some other research around alpha males and you look at that in nature, inclusive, I'm I'm also including human beings in this because we are a part of nature. If if anyone's, you know, not aware of that. Um, (laughs) um, uh, Alpha males don't only play that role. They also play the role of of groundedness, of soft leadership and direction, of safety, of security, uh, of strength. Uh, here, here's a picture. Imagine a um, silverback gorilla cuddling up to or stepping next to uh, a baby gorilla and what that picture represents and what that gorilla the silverback represents to the rest of the environment around um you know this i'm guessing yourself um there is a a, an innate alphaness that you have with you and your family that's a very soft place it's not a violent place it's not an angry place there's the um you know imagine when your uh little girl correct yes uh you're a big strong guy imagine when your little girl is curled up on your chest mm. that's the the other side of the alpha male and uh, in my experience, often one is shamed, the more violent side, and one is also um, forgotten. The soft side, that soft side with the daughter on your chest, that will still get up and someone comes into your house, you will protect your family. So you get to have both. And so for me, um, you know, when I say 
part of my purpose is to demonstrate that. It also means part of my purpose is to find that for myself. Um, to find uh, the acceptance of my violence, the acceptance of my rage, the acceptance of my need to beat my chest, the acceptance of my need to compete and compare with all the other males on this call. It's, it's automatic. Mm. As well as to bring in the softness of showing up with all the other males on this call and being humble with all the other males on this call and allowing myself to see gifts in the other males on this call that maybe are less refined in me that I want to, I want to refine and I want to be a part of so that I can celebrate each of you rather than the need to put you down um, or um, attack you or make you wrong. Um, so I can have that balance. Oh shit, there's a part of me that has this compete and compare side, maybe the less aware alpha male. And there's another part of me that has this humbleness side of finding myself within each of the males on here. Uh, a friend of mine was once at a, a spiritual talk and um, uh, the, the guru was sharing to, to everyone. And he's, <laughs> this, I'm going to paraphrase here and excuse my, my, you know, my cursing here for a moment. Uh, the guru said, um, to all the women in the crowd, he said, no matter how spiritually developed you think a man is, know that when he walks into any room, he thinks three things. Mm -hmm. can I fight it? Can I fuck it? And can I, um, eat it? <laughs> That's the reactive alpha side. And we have the ability to also have the observer to notice that, to be soft with that, to be playful with that side and not reactively act that out as an example. Um, with any woman that's here, I don't need to reactively act out my need to flirt or feel dominant with any of them because I can observe that part of me and not let it need to mm. act that behavior out. Whereas we can just go down you know, any street in America and watch a woman walk across the street and someone beeps their horn or whistles or does any of that shit that's the reactive alpha male that isn't aware of his own reactive nature and doesn't know how to press pause on that. I also want to say that women also walk into rooms and probably have three things that go through them as well. Uh, they're probably slightly different, but also very similar. So I will leave that to our, our, our sisters here to, you know, uh, feel into what is true for them in terms of when they walk into a room, what are kind of three immediate reactive things that come up? Many men, as I have experienced them, uh, have not spent a lot of time working or diving into the wounds that they carry around their experience of their mother. There's a lot there. And many men who um, carry those wounds uh, that are unintegrated or unhealed, and I am still integrating and healing those, so I am by no means perfect, um, will act out those wounds subconsciously towards any female partner they're in partnership with, whether that's business, uh, intimacy, uh, or any way, any other kind of interaction, all the way to the grocery store. And that is often coming from unresolved pain, trauma, wounding about experience of mom that gets taken out onto women. 
I, I will also say that women carry the same burden. Often their un, unhealed challenges, et cetera, with dad are carried and projected out on, onto us. I think a, a healthy alpha male also recognizes how powerful he can be perceived and doesn't need to use that power to dominate, but uses that power mm. to help power for all, mm. not power for one. I know I can, you know, people, I'm a big guy. I know, and when I get heated, I can get very serious. And because of that, I know other people's perceptions and projections onto me. And because of that, it's something that I need to be aware of and control how I express my power. There's, um, you know, when we do this type of work, uh, one side of this pyramid is essentially learning that uh, you are not other people's projections. That's one side of the story. <laughs> that can become a place that we hide. I'm not your, I'm not your projections. You don't know me. You're just projecting onto me. That, beca- that can become a very easy place to hide. The opposite side of that polarity is once you learn the awareness of I'm not your projections, which takes, my experience takes time. And you may even have to go through a phase of using it to hide. Then becomes the other side of that, which is I may not be your projections, but I'm curious what I can learn about what you project onto me that's true for me. Mm-hmm. That's the healthy alpha. That's the, the humbleness that says, yes, it is your projection. And the curiousness of what can you see in me that I can't see in myself because I wear blinders. That's where the kind of reactive piece goes into the, um, un, let's just say, unhealthy male or unhealthy female. It's, it's the reactive nature and the responsive nature is the other side of that. Okay. Wow. I'll use an example. Um, I was in, a, before I moved to Denmark, um, I was in a, a quite long relationship and there was a moment where uh we were arguing about something and 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 uh my partner at the time said you know you're being really passive aggressive now there's a an old part of me that would have said fuck you that's just pure reactivity there's a less old part of me that would say subtly say i'd say the same fuck you but it'd be hidden it'd be hidden in spirituality well that's your projection Mm, mm. there's the mature part of me that said and this is the part that showed up that's why i'm sharing it so i can look mature um the part of me showed up and said I paused when she said it. I kind of ran back the last few sentences that I had spoken. And I said, wow, you're right. I I am being passive aggressive and I apologize for that. That's the same power of the unhealthy alpha male shared in a power for all not power for one it's so powerful to be intimate with yourself in the presence of another person that it actually creates connection rather than disconnection in that moment i deeply connected with myself i found myself in another's projection 
And my partner also found safety in my power because she knew she could now share more with me in that space and that I wouldn't Mm -hmm. react or attack, that I would be willing to have connection through conversation and context. If I would have reacted, and most people do, as we all know, with the fuck you or the subtle, that's your projection, the propensity for my partner to continue to share gets smaller and smaller Mm -hmm. and smaller Mm -hmm. and smaller. Now, that's her responsibility. I am just saying that it's a a two-way street in this. The more safety we can create with each other through responsiveness, uh, the more we can actually connect and that broadens the amount that we can share. It broadens the amount that we can be honest with each other. It broadens the amount that we can be intimate with each other. It broadens the depth and width of conversation and connection with I'm going to use the opposite sex here, but in any, in any sex, 